Hey there, this is Dr. Doug again, and today's topic to discuss is orthodontic insurance. This is something we often get asked uh, during the new patient call or the first time you come into an office uh, for a consultation. And the most important thing to know that your orthodontic benefit is different than your benefit for, for general dentistry or for your, what we think of as your routine dental care, such as your cleanings and any fillings you may need. Um, your general dentistry insurance um, is something that renews every year. So it's like um, a pool of money that every year you have a certain amount allotted to you that you can use and dip into every year for routine cleanings, fillings, um, things of that nature. And, and at the end of every year, the new year comes and that, that pool of money is refilled to use again. Um, for orthodontics, however, it's really a lifetime maximum, which means that they give the insurance company will give you a set amount of money to use one time and once it's exhausted it's not going to replenish again uh, whether next year five years or ten years from now once it's used it's gone um, so our office will always find out for you what your total um, benefit will be for the lifetime of the patient um, and you'll always know that prior to your first consultation so we gather the information during your your first phone call or um, if you correspond us through the internet, through email, or when you book online through our, our ZocDoc service. Um, so that when you come in for your first consultation, um, once the consultation is done, you will know how much of your treatment costs are going to be uh, paid for by the insurance company. So you can make a decision on going forward with the treatment um, right away if you choose. Um, now, within orthodontic insurance, um, or any dental insurance really, there's, there, there's different types of insurance. And there's really three... Um, main types of insurance. So let's start with the first one called a PPO, a Preferred Provider Organization. And what that means is really it's usually the best types of insurance. Those are the ones where the insurance company prefers you go to one of their providers. However, you can choose to go anywhere. Um, and that really gives you a lot of um, freedom as far as choosing a doctor that's right for you. And while they prefer you to go to an in-network provider, um, they, the insurance company will often pay the same benefit to the doctor whether you're in network or out of network uh, with your care um, and that's a really important thing to know. Now in our offices we, we tend to take, we typically take all major PPO insurance plans. If there is a smaller plan which we may not be aware of or may, maybe not in network with, um, there's a good chance as long as it's a PPO that you will still get the same benefit if you come to us as, as an out of network patient. Um, because it is a PPO plan. Um, the other types of plans are called DMOs, or Dental Maintenance Organization, and that's really a dental type of an HMO. And in those types of plans, you really have to go to an in-network provider if you want to utilize whatever benefits you have. Okay. Um, now, the third type of plan is, uh, at least in New York, we call it New York State Medicaid. And there are a lot of plans that you may not think they Medicaid, um, but they may follow the same rules, guidelines, um, and restrictions as a New York Medicaid plan. Um, many of the uh, what we call Obama-type insurance plans, um, they follow the same guidelines as New York State Medicaid, at least for the, the New York-style plans. And what that means is that if you don't have what is deemed a medical necessity for orthodontic treatment by the insurance company or by New York State, you will receive no orthodontic benefit. Um, so if you do qualify for the plan, if you go to an in-network provider, you will usually have zero out-of-pocket cost. Um, so it's really a double-edged sword in that if you have a really severe condition, and what we mean by severe or medical necessity is, for example, someone with a severe underbite where the bottom teeth stick out in front of the top teeth, um, where you have an impacted canine, which is, or impa any impacted adult teeth where teeth are stuck inside the jawbone and they can't actually come in without intervention with an oral surgeon along with braces. Um, these types of more involved conditions will usually qualify as a medical necessity. Um, but anything outside of that, such as routine overbite correction, uh, crowded teeth, um, mild, moderate crowding, even sometimes severe crowding will not qualify under these plans. Um, so the, the typical orthodontic patient who comes in for correction of an overbite or correction of crowded teeth or, or things of that nature um, usually will receive no benefit if you are on either a Medicaid plan 
um, an Obama style plan, uh, Obama care plan, um, or a lot of these, or a lot of managed care plans. Um, so we encourage everyone, even if we don't participate in those specific plans, and you call our office for a consultation, take advantage of our, our free consultations, because if nothing else, you'll get at least somewhat of a dental uh, education in your type of bite, in your insurance plan, which we'll be more than happy to discuss with you. And if we feel you will be covered um, in, in, un, under the, the New York State guidelines, um, then you're free to go to an office um, and, and uh, to actually get approved and go through treatment there well, at no cost to yourself. Um, so our consults are always free. And um, we look at it as a way to not only um, diagnose um, the patient's teeth, but also the, to educate you a little bit on orthodontics, insurance, and, and, and how things work in our field. Um, so I hope this answered a lot of your questions. Um, but uh, remember, consults are always free. We welcome you to come in, meet us, and, uh, and, and, and get an evaluation. Um, but um, we look forward to seeing you again in our next video. Have a good one, guys.